the theory of relativity says is the faster you move, the slower time moves for you. And the faster you move, the more length contracts in the direction of motion. This has all kinds of crazy consequences. Let's say you have a set of identical twins, the exact same age. What if one of those twins got on a theoretical rocket ship that could travel way faster than any rocket ship actually can? One of the twins gets on a rocket ship and travels around at half the speed of light for a year what the guy on the ground measures as a year. So the guy on the ground has a stopwatch. After one year, his brother comes back. What does his brother's stopwatch say? He's, time has been passing slower for him, right? You might expect that if he's traveling at half the speed of light, half the time would have passed, but it's not exactly a one-to-one -one ratio like that. If, it, if you do the calculation, it comes out to, I think, something like nine months will have passed for the brother on the spaceship. Yeah, so the one that was flying around would now be younger. A rocket ship on fast enough you could live forever? Relative to other people. Oh, shit. This was a crazy thought experiment that Einstein came up with back in the day, but that thought experiment has basically come true. Check this out. Did anyone catch? what the time dilation is going to be? Three milliseconds. Three milliseconds. This is because time dilation really only starts to add up to any significant effect if you're traveling at a significant fraction of the speed of light. And even though the International Space Station is traveling at 17,000 miles an hour, that is such a tiny fraction of the speed of light that time dilation is barely going to add up at all. So. At this point, you guys might be thinking, well, that's already a ridiculous premise. And if in the real world that is only going to make a difference of three milliseconds, like, why do we even care? Like, what is the point of even studying this? It has other consequences, too. It can mess with how two different observers observe a sequence of events happening. An observer in one frame of reference might see event A happen first and then event B happen second. But another observer who's moving might see event B happen first and then event A. Let me show you why. So this is another one of Einstein's thought experiments. Um, and he gave it some backstory just to make it more interesting. The backstory is basically there's these two countries that are at war. And finally after years of warring they decided they'll sign a peace treaty. But they're still both really proud nations, and the leaders are all political, and they're saying, you have to sign the treaty first, no, you have to sign the treaty first, we have to sign it in my country, no, my country, and so on. And so there's all this politics going on, and finally someone comes up with a compromise, okay, you'll each sign a separate copy of the treaty at the exact same time, and you'll sign it while you're on a train, and you'll sign it at the exact moment that the train is at the border of country A and country B. So, we have this train. On the train, there's this long table. In the very center of the table is this light bulb, which will turn on at the exact moment that the light bulb passes the border between country A and country B. So at that exact moment, the light bulb will turn on, and then standing at opposite ends of the tables are the two leaders of the two countries, and as soon as the photons from the light bulb strike their eyes, they'll both sign the treaty, okay? So this seems simple enough. For someone who's standing on the train, the way that they see it is, again, let's simplify things. Let's pretend the speed of light is 10 meters per second, and let's pretend that this train is moving at 5 meters per second. And then let's say from the light bulb to each end of the table is 15 meters. So, someone standing on the train sees the light bulb turn on, it's the photons move at 10 meters per second. So one second later, this photon will have moved 10 meters to right here, and this photon will have moved 10 meters to right here. So it takes another half of a second for each photon to reach the um, two leaders. They both sign their documents at the exact same time, a second and a half after the light bulb turns on. But how does this look to someone who's standing on the platform outside? What he sees is, again, he has to measure the speed of light being 10 meters per second, no matter what. It's not like he sees this photon moving at the 10 meters per second plus the 5 meters per second of the train. 
than this one moving at 10 meters per second minus this at 10 meters per second of the train, right? So he's standing over here. What he sees is they each travel 10 meters in one second, but he also sees the train move 5 meters in that one second, right? So one second later, the train is going to be right here. It still will have moved 10 meters. This photon still will have moved 10 meters, but this guy will have also moved 5 meters, and he'll see the photon after one second. The photon <coughs> is now right here. This photon has still moved 10 meters from where it was emitted, so it's right here, but it's only gained 5 meters meters relative to the bulb now. From his point of view, relative to the train only moving at five meters per second, right? It's going to take one second to get here, two seconds to get here, three seconds to finally reach this guy. So someone on the train, literally the reality that they experience, they watch both people sign at the exact same moment. But someone standing on the platform, literally the reality that they observe, they see this guy sign after one second, and they don't see this guy sign for three <coughs> seconds after the light bulb. They can literally mess with the sequence of events. But you might still be saying, that's still a pretty ridiculous like circumstance, right? This isn't something that's going to be happening in everyday life. I have one more example to prove to you guys why this is important, how this does affect you in your everyday life. Does anyone happen to know how GPS works? Your GPS device, your phone, um, has to communicate with satellites. The reason it has to communicate with satellites is because, let's say you're standing here on Earth, your phone, what it does is it sends a signal to a satellite out in space, and it times how long it takes for that signal to travel from your phone to the satellite and back. It's traveling at the speed of light. They know how fast the signal is traveling. So based on how long it takes for the signal to go there and come back, your phone can tell how far away it is from that satellite. Okay? So if it knows it's exactly this far away from that satellite, unfortunately it doesn't know exactly what direction it is from that satellite. So theoretically you could be anywhere on like a circle the distance away from the satellite, right? And because I'm drawing this in two dimensions, in three dimensions it's actually a sphere. Basically, what it boils down to is you have to end up sending signals to multiple satellites. So if you send a signal to that satellite and another signal to this satellite, then that'll boil it down to, okay, you might be anywhere on this circle that's it's complicated. Um, not what we're really talking about. But what you end up having to do is send a signal to four different satellites. And you can figure out how far away you are from each of those satellites and pinpoint your place in space. That's how GPS works. But because these signals are traveling at the speed of light, and the speed of light is so fast, it is incredibly important that the timing is very, very accurate. How many miles does light travel in one second? Almost 200,000 miles in one second. These things aren't that far away from Earth. Satellites are anywhere from like 200 miles to like 1,000 miles off the surface of the Earth. So this is, transmission is going to happen in a fraction of a second. So let's pretend for a moment that the signal actually takes 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4 seconds to go to the satellite and come back. If that timing is not perfect, if your phone misjudges that to be 0 0.1, 2, 3, 5 seconds, how far would light travel in that extra 10,000th of a second? Well, if you look at this, you end up figuring out that it travels almost 20 miles. So if it gets that timing wrong by a 10,000th of a second, your phone is going to think it's 20 miles away from where it actually is. So it's incredible <coughs> that these things have their timing perfect. If those satellites up in space, which are experiencing time dilation because they're moving very fast, didn't account for that time dilation, that time dilation would start to add up. And after one day, even though it would only be in the magnitude of nanoseconds, your phone, your GPS would be off by seven miles. 
and that continues to add up every single day. So let's get to some calculations, right? Don't you want to be able to figure out how they figured that Mark is going to age an extra three milliseconds? Let me teach you. The formula you need to know is this v squared over c squared. That's it. Where t is time proper, which pretty much means not moving, and t naught is basically the time that passes for the clock that is moving. Let's do that calculation for Mark and Scott. Scott is going to be on the space station for one year, so the moving time is one year. Let me rewrite this as t is equal to t naught is one year divided by square root of 1 minus v is velocity. How fast is Scott moving? It's like 17,000. 17,000 miles an hour, but I'll give it to you in units that will be more helpful. It's 7.66 kilometers per second. And again, we have to square that. Divided by c squared, where c is the speed of light, so that's 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second squared. But we have to get all of the units to agree. Because we're using the speed of light in meters per second, we need to put this in meters per second and put this in seconds. So let me do that. If you figure out how many seconds there are in one year, you should get zero seconds in a year. <coughs> Divided by 1 minus, again, we need this in meters per second rather than kilometers per second. So that's just going to be 7660 meters per second. This is where you plug that all into your calculator correctly, you would expect to see that time Somewhere proper would be an extra 3 milliseconds, is what they said, right? But you don't actually get an extra 3 milliseconds if you do that calculation in your calculator. If you do it in your calculator, you'll get that rather than this plus 3 milliseconds, you get 0 0.2. We're expecting to see 0, 0, 003, right? You actually get 0, 001. Why don't you get 0, 0, 003? Any of you guys happen to have heard of anything besides your velocity, which can affect how fast time passes for you? Anybody see Interstellar? Yes. Oh my god. Why did time dilation happen there? Remember? Because they got too close to a black hole. So there's two different things that can affect how fast time passes for you. One is how fast you're going, but another is how close you are to a large gravitational well. So, even though Mark should gain an extra one-tenth of a second, that is negated by the fact that he is closer to the gravitational well of the Earth than Scott is. So once you take that into account, it ends up, rather than being a hundredth of a second, three milliseconds. And I have an assignment for you guys doing pretty much a couple more of these.